Let's see if I can get this right here. You all, what you just saw is me doing the happy dance. I'm elated. I'm overjoyed about this news. Seldom do we hear about a country, an island, anywhere really, holding Americans accountable when they do and commit crimes in other countries. A lot of people don't know this, but Americans believe that they can go to other countries, not all, not all. There are some good Americans who are tourists and travel and respect other people's laws in their country. But too many of our citizens, I'm just being honest, too many of our citizens believe they can go anywhere and misbehave don't have to abide by the laws of those countries where they are visitors and guests and then think that somehow they should not be held accountable under the letter of the law in those countries. Now, I don't know if y'all have been following what's happening in Turks and Caicos, but it's beautiful. It's like the chef's kiss. It's beautiful to me. Because I know what these scumbags are doing. And finally, somebody is putting down the hammer on. So let me explain what's been going on in Turks and Caicos. Basically, Americans and others, but Americans in general, have been going to this little small touristy island, Turks and Caicos, and bringing weapons and ammunition to kill exotic animals. Yeah, murder the exotic animals. Exactly. Yeah, you heard me right. They go to Turks and Caicos to do hunting of exotic animals, murder animals. Now, recently, a new administration has come into power in Turks and Caicos. And they said, uh-uh, we're not letting you murder animals anymore. Not in our country. So, anybody found with ammunition, any amount of ammunition, they're getting arrested, being detained, and they're looking at 12 years, minimum 12 years, for animal cruelty and abuse. To me, that's too too short of a term. I would, if I were running it, you best be glad I'm not running Turks and Caicos, Americans. Because if it were me, you get 50 years minimum. Oh, you want to shoot the exotic birds and the exotic wildlife there? 50 years. And I'm going to charge you a $100,000 fine. Because the people that go to Turks and Caicos, they got money. If you got money to buy exotic hollow point bullets and, you know, weaponry and all of that kind of stuff, you got money. You got money. You fork it over. If I were running Turks and Caicos, you would fork over all your money. You'd have to put your home up for sale, all of it. That's what you get for trying to do some fucking dirty shit to the animals that are just minding their business. You know, one of the beautiful things about Turks and Caicos is the ecosystem, the ecological system, the beautiful, like, diverse of the different species there. And rather than these people come to this island and enjoy themselves, enjoy the wildlife, the aquatic life. They want to come and kill things. And now the new administration has said, no, 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 no. You're not doing this anymore. Not to our animals. No. So shout out and huge thank you to Turks and Caicos. No. Americans, you know, it's complete bullshit. One of them was crying and everything. I had no idea that ammunition. All fake tears. Oh, it's all bullshit. They knew. They knew. They, trust me, they knew. Hey, Americans, you have similar policies. TSA, if you get caught going through TSA with a loaded gun, you will get arrested and detained, and you'll have to pay a fine. Now, if that's the law in your country, you wouldn't want to, people from Turks and Caicos to come into your country, go through TSA with loaded guns. You would get them, you would have them detained arrested. So they're just doing simply the same thing that you do at TSA. I don't see a problem with it, really. 
I'm like, how did these bullets, you know, they're like, I had no clue all of my life. I had no clue I had bullets in my luggage case. I don't buy it, y'all. I don't buy it. I call bullshit. You don't know you're carrying bullets? Come on now. I don't buy that. I just, you know, it's something. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not buying it. The fifth American. The fifth American to be detained just this week in Turks and Caicos with ammunition. Now think about it. A coincidence is when something happens that's rare. It's a rare occurrence. It's a coincidence that something happened. A pattern is when you see multiple people following the same thing. There's no way in the world I believe five people just this year have been detained for ammunition in their luggage. And that's just a random coincidence. No, they're going down there. Either they themselves are going to do the hunting or they're selling the ammunition or buying guns from, you know, illegal gun dealers down there to do the hunting. Because... You're supposed to get a permit, but you know how these folks are when they go to these places. They don't think that they have to abide by all of those kind of rules. They can just do whatever they want to. So, yeah, I saw their wives crying, you know, their mothers crying. He's a good boy. He's a, he's a sweetheart. He's a loving person. And I'm like, no, he's not. He's a scumbag. He's an asshole. And he's an animal murderer. Your son was going down there to murder some animals. And fuck him. Fuck him and fuck you. Throw him in prison. Let him do 12 years. I guarantee you they won't make that mistake again, right? Yeah. I love it. The State Department, they've been reaching out to the American State Department talking about, come and get us out. We are Americans. No. The State Department say you have to abide by other people's laws and rules in their countries. You can't just go to another person's country and just do whatever the fuck you want to. I mean, you could, but you, there's going to be ramifications for it. You all know that there was a whole bunch of killings of American citizens in Colombia. Yeah, earlier this year, there was a whole bunch of Americans who got killed in Colombia. Now, word on the street was from the people in Colombia where this was happening, these people were, you know, meeting underage girls in Colombia, little girls, wanting to have relations with girls. And, you know, they were getting set up. And when they came and met with the girl, they would meet with the cartel. You know how that turns out. But the blame, bang, bang, bang. Yeah, they weren't doing, they weren't on the up and up is what I'm saying. These were pedophiles coming down to Colombia to sodomize Colombian little girls. That's what, that's what the people on the street told me. You know, because I asked around, I'm like, hey, I heard that some Americans have been getting harmed down here. What's going on? They said, no, 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 no. It's nothing like that. Let me tell you what's really going on. These people were pedophiles. They were trying to harm our little girl. Hanging out at the little schools up there. Yeah, little high schools, little grade schools. They're hanging out at the schools. Waiting for the girls to get off. Yeah, talking about we got $200, $300 coming to... Come and come with us back to our hotel room. We got three hundred dollars to give you. Yeah, yeah, that's what the Colombians told me. I said, "Oh, okay, okay, cool beans." I, you know, I'm never gonna condone violence, but don't don't try to act like don't try to act like these people are innocent. Is all I'm saying. They told me that dude that went to the hotel room. He was trying to get underage Colombian girls, 12, 13, 14 year old girls. And they said them girls have families and they know people in them communities. 
And so when they told the people that they know, hey, this person is offering me $300, $400 to go back to the hotel room, they say, okay, go back to the hotel room. But we're going to come with you. Tell us where you are. When you get there, tell us where you are so we can come up in there and have a little conversation. Do a little straightening out. Don't think that you can go to other people's countries and trample on the law, get away with things that you couldn't get away with in your own country. Don't think you can do that, Americans. I'll have no sympathy for you. Because you ruin it for people like myself. Not that they would suspect or even believe that I would behave that way because they know I'm going to be, you know, on the up and up. They know that, you know, you're never going to have any problems with me. I'm going to point out the problems so they can fix them. I didn't even point out those problems, so I didn't even know what was going on. I just asked on the street, hey, what's going on? And they told me, these men are pedophiles trying to harm our little girls down here. Now, what do you think I thought about that? I didn't shed any tears for what happened to them men. I didn't shed any tears. I don't care. Don't come down there trying to harm little girls. Don't do that. It's not okay. You know, and the same is with the animals. Don't come down there trying to kill the up animals. Don't do that. It's not okay. If the law states that you can do it, then don't do it. Period. And don't act like you're the victim when you get caught doing it. No, Americans love to do that, try to act as though they're the victims. They'll go and run to their media and present this bogus propaganda narrative that they're the victims. Not that they were down there victimizing other people. You know how they do? The victimizer always pretends to be the victim. They do that, they, they're masters at that. They mastered that technique. The victimizer claiming to be the victim. Oh, I saw him on the television crying, his mother talking about, he's a nice boy. He never would harm anybody. He's a loving person. Hollow tip bullet points, multiple bullets, eight, nine, ten shells. You know what he was going down there to do. He's so loving. Yeah, I'm sure he is. When he's killing them animals, yeah, he's loving. Go to hell. If there is one, go to it. Because you're not bullshitting and convincing me. You know, Americans think they can even bullshit other Americans now. They're so bad. This is how it is, y'all. If you're watching this overseas, this is how it is. They think they can bullshit me. Well, you can't bullshit me. I'm an American. I know what y'all do. I know you don't abide by any laws. You don't even follow the laws where you live in. I see you breaking the laws all the time. And many people talking about law and order, I see them breaking the laws all the time. I kid you not. All the time. I hear about it all the time. All the time, the main people talking about law and order break the laws. Hence, Donald Trump. You know, he talks about law and order all the time. And he got 91 felony indictments, right? But he's missed the law and order, right? I don't know who they think they're talking to. They, they, they try to insult our intelligence. Uh, you, you say that stupid shit to, to somebody who's not, you know, not intelligent, doesn't have an IQ over room temperature, you can say that shit to him. Don't say that stupid shit to me. I know what they were going down there in Turks and Queso to do. Harm animals. Murder animals. And it's, it's despicable. It's horrendous. Now, some countries allow you, sadly and regrettably, to do that kind of fuck shit. In Africa, I think they allow you to kill up so many of their animals like that. Bunch of dumb fuck. Yeah, you pay, you pay the country of whatever them African countries are, you pay them so much money, and they'll let you hunt a couple, they'll let you hunt and kill up a couple of elephants and all that kind of fuck stupid shit. So they take a couple of thousand dollars from usually white men and then let them kill up all their animals over there. Like a bunch of goofy idiots. Well, Turks and Queso said, no, you're not coming over here to do that in our country anymore. When we find you with some ammunition, we already know what you're implying and intending to do, and we're going to hold your ass accountable. Twelve years minimum, about $15,000 fine. 
And they're having to pay that fine, too. Yeah, you're having to pay that fine. They're definitely paying that fine. And they got to meet with the police every week. Facts. They got to check in with the police every week to make sure they're still on the island. They seize their passports. Facts. You got to check in every week. Where are you at? You can cry all you want to, but you knew what you were coming down there to do. They just found one woman from Florida. She's crying, talking about she she had two ammunition rounds in her luggage. She had no idea. No, I tell you what she was probably doing. She might not have been going down there to kill the animals, but she was going to sell the ammunition to somebody who is already down there to kill the animals. You know how much that ammunition can go for? They'll buy the ammunition from her for like maybe $2,000, 3000 1500 a bullet. Yeah. So she was going to try to make a quick 3000 and then head back to the Florida after she was going to be complicit in animal murder. Don't cry. Don't cry for me, Argentina. We know. See, they be thinking I'm slow and I'm slipping, but I'm not. Y'all be thinking, oh, you don't know shit. Oh, I know. I know. I just, sometimes I just want to touch the surface. I don't even want to go deep. Because it'd be so disgusting, so atrocious, y'all's behavior. I don't even really want to talk about it. It's, it's, it's just, it's turn off. I lose my appetite. Yeah, it's not good. So I'm glad Turks and Queso is finally, you know, dealing with this problem. Seems like it's a lot of Americans. It doesn't seem like a lot of Europeans are doing this. It's an American thing. Yeah. It's, it's yet again, yet again, our people are in the news globally for doing something not great. This, and this goes to my point. This is exactly why we can't have nice things. We can't go nowhere. Think about that. Americans in general can't go nowhere and just behave themselves and conduct themselves appropriately. They can't even do it in their own country, but they go outside of their country and they're running around in Colombia trying to find some little high school girl. Now think about that. All of those women, grown-ass women, you, you say you're a man, you like women, all them grown-ass women of age who are single down there in Colombia, and you want to be with some middle school and high school girl. No, they just, they don't, I don't feel any sympathy for you. I don't feel any sympathy for you. When I asked around what was happening, they told me right away. They said, oh, these are pedophiles. They said, we found them hanging out at this and this school. They were talking to this and this girl. They were offering this and this amount of U.S. money. Come into them schools talking about you going to give a girl $300. Come with you back to the hotel. Yeah, disgusting. I, I, I'm telling y'all. It's just, it's too much. But I asked around, I just wanted clarification. Because I didn't know. And you know, you hear stories and you want to make sure that it's accurate. Because when Americans report the story, they always talk about, an American was harmed. But you never really know why. So you got to ask the locals. The locals will tell you the truth. They have no reason to lie. The locals are not going to lie to you. You can have a good, you can have a beer and have a good laugh about it. They'll, they'll tell you everything. Especially them old women in some of them remote villages. Oh, man. They be telling the best jokes. They got jokes for days about what they've been seeing. Yeah. So that's really all I have to say. Turks and Caicos is taking care of business. Bar I heard something about this like happening in Barbados too. They said somebody in Barbados took a gun with loaded ammunition and then came back to Miami and TSA called them. Crazy. They going out, they just, they just they, you know, anything to pop into certain people's mind, they just feel they can do. Yeah, you know, I trust and believe. I I have I, I know I know our people. 
I know Americans. I know not. I won't say that all folks in this country behave like that, but too many of our people do. Can't respect anybody else's ordinance and laws and authority. I've seen it with my own eyes. German people, they'll go to different countries, they'll behave themselves. Not always, I can't say every German person. I've had some run-ins with some French people, though. They're, I've had some assholes who were French. But I've had some real assholes who were French. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even going to tell you all the stories, but I've had some assholes who were French and Polish. Some assholes who were French and Polish. But for the most part, the Germans are lovely. Yeah. So shout out to the Germans who travel. You've been very hospitable lovely Americans when they travel you know it's half and half some of them are good some of them are you know one thing I will say about Americans you always know they're American they're kind of obnoxious that's another thing even if it's not against the law Americans cut out being obnoxious everywhere you go that's not a good look you know you can always tell it's Americans or British they're loud when they get drunk you just look over and it's a whole bunch of people making a lot of noise and drunk. It's usually Americans or British. The Americans are worse because at least the British, they'll go and have fun. They'll dance and stuff. Americans will want to get into fights and stuff. Be arguing with people. They're behaving like they're in the grocery store in their little cities down there in the bar. Cursing, cursing the workers out. Breaking glass. I've seen all of it. You name it. I've seen it. It's, it's, it's a bad look for us. I, I'm just being honest with you. I wouldn't tell you no lies. I'm not going to hold you. Um, one thing about me, I'm, I call balls and strikes. I'm just, what I observe, I tell you what I observe. No. The Germans, to me, the Germans are always on their best behavior. They don't give me no problems. The Germans are super nice. Maybe, somebody said maybe those are not the racist Germans traveling. I don't know. I don't know. You say it's a lot of racism in Germany. Maybe that's true. Yeah. But the ones that I meet, they don't bother me. They're good. Yeah. Most of the French people I meet are good too. But I'm just saying I've met some assholes who were French and Polish. The Americans are always obnoxious. I'm not saying that they're criminals. I'm just saying, in my opinion, what I've seen, they're obnoxious. Especially at the bars. They're the worst. The British, they'll get drunk and rowdy, but, you know, they'll tamper down. The Americans, ugh. I've had to leave establishments when too many Americans show up. Let me repeat that. I've had to leave exit stage left or exit stage right when too many Americans show up. I start seeing a lot of Americans show up, I'm leaving. I already know it's going to be drama. If there's a couple of them, it'll be okay. But once they reach a certain threshold in an in the institution, it gets a little bit too much. They start taking over. And they make it known that they're taking over now that it's that many of them there. Mm -hmm. See, these are only things you would know if you're an American. You're not going to know this if you're, you know, from Spain. You're not going to know this. From Brazil. You're not going to know this. You would only know it if you're American. <coughs> Yeah, no, the, the Chinese, again, when people from China travel, they're super nice, super nice, super, super nice, the sweetest, yeah, South Koreans, when they travel, super nice, don't make no problems, always respectful to laws, always nice to the locals, always nice, yeah, nice, nice, nice. 
So you all, um, this is this is happening now in Turks and Caicos. You know, they're finding a whole bunch of Americans with loaded ammunition and guns. And I know right away they're going down there to kill up them animals. It's a shame. Because think about it, you can't even go on vacation and just chill out on the beach. They can't even just chill out. It's, it's, it's really a shame what I see about Americans, to be honest with you. It's a shame. It's really a shame. This is just the, it, to me, it doesn't, you know, they, they always talk about America and, and stealing pride. But when you have these type of stories, you have to be honest about the situation. This doesn't instill any pride in anybody to have our people go over to another country, a small-ass country at that, and be causing all this much problem. Yet, eight American men were unalived in Colombia, all over, in different places, all throughout the country. And somebody said all them men were pedophiles trying to get our little girl. So do you think I feel sympathy for them? I don't. Because you got, like one woman was telling me, you got all these women down here, and they want some little girl. They're freaks, freaks and weirdos and losers. Tr yeah, tricking is in their blood. Tricking, tricking is like they, they can't help themselves. And that's why, on a side note, that's why a lot of them complain about American women. Because they can't trick off at the level they want to in this country, so they go overseas to try to trick off. They don't go overseas to, you know, do normal things like the rest of us. You know, tour different sites, try different food, meet different local people, you know, dance and learn the language. They don't do all that stuff, no. They go over on their worst behavior. Yeah. And then will want me to defend them. I'm supposed to defend them because simply they're American. I've been telling y'all for a long time now, you're not getting a defense from me unless it's warranted. Now, if somebody hems you in and ties you in and you didn't do shit, then I'll come and defend you. But it's all the people in that area telling me you are a pedophile. You down there hollering at some little girls in high school, offering them $300 to come back to your uh, hotel, flashing bo huge bottles of liquor at these girls, knowing that they don't have that much money, knowing you're trying to entice them to do something that they shouldn't be doing. No, no, I'm not defending you. I'm going to be AWOL. You won't even ever see me. And I'm not going to be sad if the locals do something detrimental to you. If you wind up in a ditch, chopped up, I'm not going to feel sad about it. One of them they found without his genitals. Now, I knew what that meant. I'm not stupid. If you find a man in a ditch and no genitals on him, you know what that meant. We're not stupid. I don't condone that. I, I don't think the cartel should do it. I told you, I don't believe in violence. However, don't put yourself in situations like these people are doing in Turks and Caicos, like those men did in Colombia, and like so many other Americans do. Don't put yourself in situations where you could have that happen to you. Now, if somebody wrongs you or done something harmful to you and you were a law-abiding citizen, shit happens. Chalk it up to the game and move on. But in these instances, the locals, especially the women, told me that they were hunting for little girls. Those men who got unalived were hunting for little girls. Little girls. Not women. You know, they claim they're going down there for women. A woman is not 12 and 13. You know that woman is, you know that young girl is not of age in your country, so she's not of age in their country either. You know, this is, this is getting to be ridiculous. And people shouldn't have to keep having these discussions with the same type of folks, you know. It gets, it gets to a point where it's too much. 
I'm, I'm not saying about it. I'm really not saying. I couldn't be bothered. Life went on. They were trying to joke about it. I didn't find it funny when they were talking about they found them in a ditch without their genitals. I didn't find that funny. But they were laughing about it. I didn't find it funny. I found it sad and tragic. Sad and tragic that they went down there to try to prey on some young little girls. And sad and tragic that somebody had to do that to them. Yeah, on all ends, people's lives are being ruined. Yeah, unnecessarily. Just simply because people don't want to exercise no control over themselves. I see that all the time. You know, you have people that exercise poor impulse control when they're in somebody else's place. Now, to me, I learned when you were a guest, when you were a visitor, you're supposed to be on your best behavior. These people don't and these people don't even have proper etiquettes and manners. When you are a guest of somebody else in somebody else's country, a visitor, you're supposed to be on your best behavior. You're supposed to be like Casper the goat. Nobody even knows. So maybe your local friends you got, but that's it. It's amazing too. I'm gonna close on this. It's amazing. I can go and visit my friends. Have a good time, you know, enjoy myself. Rarely have any bad shit happen to me. Every once in a while you'll find somebody that wants to rob you or something like that, but shit, that happens in this country too. Carjackers be through the roof. They talk about them surfers that got carjacked in Mexico. It's sad and tragic they lost their life like that, but how many Americans tonight are going to get carjacked in Philadelphia and lose their life. How many carjackings are happening in Jacksonville and Memphis, Tennessee tonight and people are going to lose their life? So it's sad and tragic whenever that kind of situation happens, wherever it happens, but to try to act like it only happens in Mexico. Come on now. See, this is, this is what they do. They over-exaggerate when a bad circumstance happens. They'll tell you about those two surfers I heard nonstop about it. But you don't hear nothing about Roger Fortson in Florida. Hardly. Not like that. It took them a week to report that they busted into his door and unalived him. Yeah. But they were telling you nonstop about Mexico. And see, that's part of the propaganda. Ooh, create a narrative where Mexico seems dangerous. In our places, our states, we're, we're open for business. Even though Florida is the most dangerous place on the whole planet right now. One of the most dangerous places on the planet, Earth, right now, is the state of Florida. If you happen to be certain, if you happen to fall into certain categories, if you happen to be on the spectrum of being queer, you're in danger down there. Danger, 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 Will Robinson. You're in danger. You understand what I'm telling you? If you happen to be black, you're in danger. If you're a Latino person in Florida, you're in danger. You're Asian in Florida, you're in danger. You're Jewish in Florida, you're in danger. You got you see all them Nazis walking around all on the freeway? All on the overpass? And the governor hasn't done nothing. The whole state hasn't done nothing about it. They're outside of Disney World. I didn't see, well, let me tell you something. I didn't see one person in Mexico doing Nazi salutes like I saw in Florida. That shit should have been shut down when they first started doing it. But this is why people think they can go to other countries and misbehave. Because some of them misbehave in their own goddamn country. They don't even follow any laws in their own country. So, of course, they think they can go to somebody else's country in this day. Them days of feeling sympathy for Americans when something bad happens to you, it's over with. Unless it's warranted. If I research the story when I talk to the local people and they say, no, this person was doing some fuck shit, I'm not going to do any type of sympathy for you. 
to me, you just an American that, you know, lost your life. Next story. That's a shame. Went all the way to a different country and wound up in a ditch without their genitals. All because they couldn't help themselves or control their impulses. They're all up there at the middle schools and high schools looking for Colombian girls. All because they couldn't help themselves. That's it. That's why he wound up in that ditch without his genitals. Tell the full story. This is why I tell Americans, the media, American media, tell the full story. Don't just try to portray people as being violent and savages. Tell why what happened to them happened to them. Certain instances, bad shit happens, like those surfers in Mexico that got carjacked. That really was a tragic circumstance. They weren't doing anything wrong. They got harmed. But them men that were in Colombia, all of them were pedophiles. In search of little girls in Colombia. All them people getting arrested in Turk and Casio, they're, they're there to kill up animals. Exotic animals, they're there to kill them up. They, you know, you, you gotta be honest. You gotta call a ball a ball and a strike a strike. You don't get any brownie points for just being an American. I, you know, I get sick of that shit. Like, your nationality is no big deal to me. It's not even a big deal to me. Where you're born and, and you know how you look, that's not a big deal. I don't give a fuck about that shit. You get no privilege or brownie points because you're an American. Stop it. Americans, cut that out in 2024. Stop trying to act like you're better than everybody else because you're American. A lot of times you want to go incognito when you're an American because a lot of people don't even like Americans for good reasons. Some people think that you rig the system, you manipulate things to make it work out for your citizenry as opposed to everybody else. Remember, we're 5% of the global population, yet we have all of this exorbitant wealth. 5% has all of this exorbitant wealth. Now make that make some sense. Does that make any economical sense in a, in a free base? economic system, you know that doesn't happen, right? So everybody knows that we rig and manipulate systems to work out for ourselves. It is what it is. But, you know, I, I don't like when people try to act like they're better than everybody else just because of who, where they're from. No. I don't ever do that. I don't even like telling people I'm American when I try. It's no big deal. Unless they ask. Or they say right off the bat, you're American, right? And then they have preconceived assumptions and notions about America. And I have to tell them, no, that's not true of everybody that's in this country. So I have to educate people about this country and our people. Usually I say positive things about positive citizens in our country. It's not always negative. Somebody say, you always say negative things about Americans. No, I don't. You don't even know what the hell I say. Unless you're there with me, you don't know what the hell I say. I share stories and experiences about what I've gone through. And those stories are positive and negative. It's not just one or the other, either or. It's both. There's a lot of stories I share with locals about positive things, about positive Americans. Lots of stories. I just don't bullshit about the negative shit. Like you would. I don't bullshit about the negative shit. I don't try to pretend like everything is sunshine and rainbows like you do. That's the difference. Yeah, so if you, yeah, that's another thing they try to act like. If you're critical, you're anti-American. No, no, I just tell the truth. I tell the truth about the positive things and I tell the truth about the negative things and let people come up with their own determination about the full picture of this. I'm not going to sit there and try to act like everything is sunshine and rainbow when it's not. I'd be doing a disservice to them to not tell them the truth. See, y'all y'all don't like the truth. I tell the truth. The truth, the truth, you know, the truth is not always, you know, going to be positive or negative. It's going to be what it is. If I wanted to do 
you some bullshit, I would record what's happening in Turks and Caicedo and say, you know, those people, they really didn't know that they had ammunition. They had no clue. If I wanted to do some bullshit, because I know they knew what they were doing. I know exactly that what they knew what the hell they were doing. They're not shocked that ammunition was in there and about that shit. No. 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 One of them, they found it in a zip tie bag, all the ammunition. They showed the picture of it. The different bullet rounds were in a zip tie bag, packed in between another area where you wouldn't suspect that to be. He had it packed in there with his socks and shorts. You expect me to believe eight to ten rounds of ammunition get packed in with your shorts and socks? I don't buy it. Seems like to me you're smuggling ammunition. Now think about this. If you were a drug smuggler, I I had I had a time of it when I went to England. I had to have a friend super early in the morning. It was like three o'clock in the morning because I was on a red eye and I landed. I had to wake up my friend because the uh, border border force wanted to ask me and interrogate me for two hours. Who's your friend? Where does your friend live? What does your friend do? Why are you here? I had never gone through that before. So this is ridiculous. I didn't say it was ridiculous, but I was thinking that. So I had to call my friend. My friend spoke with them. I got in, but it took forever. So, you know, these kind of things do happen. They do inspect shit. I was somewhere not too long ago, and one of the stewardess for the airplane, they had to stop her. Young lady, they had to stop her. Because they searched her bag and they found a butter knife. They told her, we're going to have to stop you. She's like, I needed that butter knife. That's my thing. They told her, you can't fly with this on your plane. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Sometimes you do forget things. But I guarantee you one thing. You're not forgetting that you packed no ammunition. Stop playing with me. You're not forgetting you packed no hollow tip bullets. Yeah, no, 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 no. 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 I don't buy it. I smell bullshit. Yeah, more bullshit. And they did all the tears and stuff like that. All they were crying. The mommy was saying that that's her son. And her son is just the nicest person. The wife was sad. And the kids are upset. You know, they had the whole nine yards. Turks and Queso, they're not buying it though. Shout out to the folks out there. They're not buying it. So... You're going to have to be on the up and up now. That's what you're going to have to do. Be respectful. As the State Department is saying, be respectful of other countries' laws. Don't just think you can come in and, you know, do whatever the hell you want to do because you're American. You know, but those days are over with. The privilege of being American and coming in like you're a tomb raider. Like your Tarzan, Georgia the Jungle kind of shit. Those days are over with. And rightfully so. And rightfully so. I got, I got no problem with that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a shame because some of them men didn't have wives and stuff like that and they found out or they had brothers and sisters, they found out that their loved one was over there in a ditch with no genitals. Their wife is like, what the hell? Why, why is my husband in a ditch with no genitals? Now they know. That happened a while back. Now they know. Because you never know. They don't even tell their wives or their girlfriends that they're going to them places to do that kind of shit. They don't tell them. No. I'm telling y'all real stuff. 
Um, I was a real fucking young nigga. No, don't be, no, somebody said, now nah, you scared. Don't be scared, because most people are friendly. Once you get into the country, most people are friendly. The government, the government, you never even have to deal with the government like that. Sometimes you will, but not like that. Most people are friendly. The locals are friendly. They're friendly in a lot of them countries. I guarantee you. If you just went over there to have a good time and a vacation, lay on the beach, go to the bars and, and, you know, stimulate their economy, they're going to love you. It's the people that go over on some fuck shit, knowing that they're doing some stuff that's dirty. If you get caught, you know, it's just like anything else. If you get caught doing some criminality in your own country, you're going to get busted, right? Same way in another person's country. If you get caught... What do they say? Don't, don't, don't do the crime if you don't want to do the time, right? If you get caught, you're going to do the time. That's it. I don't know. That's not difficult. That's not difficult. You, they, they, usually when you go to them type of exotic islands and stuff like that, you're there for like three to five days. You're not even there for that long of a period of time. Generally speaking, in my experience, most people are there in and out. And you telling me you get arrested and you only supposed to be there for five days and on the second day you get arrested? You know your ass is doing something it's not supposed to be doing. You moving and shaking in a way that's slimy and dirty. And maybe you need to reconsider how you're going to move and operate that going forward. forward. I'm just saying. To the people who lost their life in Colombia due to that, I mean, I feel sympathy for their families. That's what I'll say. I feel sympathy for their families, but hopefully this is a learning lesson and a teachable moment where other people who are thinking about going over there to behave in that similar manner they get the message that it's not going to be tolerated and not going to be condoned. Do not go to these countries praying on little girls. Cease and desist. Do not go to these countries wanting to kill off the animals. Cease and desist. That's the message. That's the moral of the story. You do that, you'll have a good vacation. You do the opposite, well, you might wind up in a ditch with no genitals. You might wind up in Turks and Queso in a prison for 12 years. You choose. You choose now. You choose. You make your decision. Because all the rest of us, we're going to make ours. You make your decision. And once you make your bed, you know what they say. You got to lie in it. Once they went out to their schools, their middle schools, pulled up and were looking at the little girls in their school uniforms, screaming at them, waving money, 300 U.S. dollars, telling them, come back to our hotel room. You made your bed. Now you got to lie in it. I don't know what to tell you. Everybody don't behave like that. If you behave in uns... Here's what I'll say. If you behave in uncivilized, don't be surprised if somebody else comes along who is also uncivilized and does something uncivilized to your uncivilized ass. I ain't condoning that they should have killed the person and left them in a ditch and cut off their genitals. I'm not condoning that. And I told the locals when I heard that, I said, that's not what I would have done. But I understand why people don't want their daughters to be harmed by American men coming into their country doing that kind of fuck shit. It's not okay. I understand why people don't want their animals to be killed. It's not okay. So it's like 
on one hand I think that some of these things are a little bit too harsh but on another hand I'm like well you have to teach a hard lesson I don't know it's a a balancing act I'm not going to be the one to kill you and cut your genitals off and throw you in a ditch but I might know some people who would I might might tell them I wouldn't do it, but I'm not going to tell you what not to do. I'm that type of person. I might know some people who will do it. I might know some people who I would advise and tell them, personally speaking, I don't feel comfortable doing it. But if you want to do it, that's you. I don't know what to tell y'all. Stay You know, when it gets to the level of you're thinking of doing something that's really fucked up, ask yourself, what are the ramifications of me doing this if somebody finds out or you get caught? Because you know you're committing the crime. They all knew they were committing the crime when they rolled up on them schools doing that with them girls. They knew it. They know that that's against the law everywhere, including Columbia. They knew. And there's enough single women where they don't need to do that. So they went purposely for that. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes, I guess. <laughs>